the diagnosis of glioblastoma has changed a lot um, uh, during uh, the last years. So originally the diagnosis was made uh, after the tumor was resected by taking uh, pieces of the tissue and looking at it under the microscope. And the two characteristics that we looked for in a tumor that we know was a primary glial tumor were the evidence of uh, vascular necrosis and pseudoproliferation. And those two characteristics are what make a glioblastoma very aggressive. It can form its own blood supply and the cells grow very fast to the level that they compete with each other and they create area of cellular death. However, most recently, and as we will hear a lot at this meeting, uh, we have moved from how things look on the slide to what is the molecular makeup of those tumors. So right now, in order for a glioblastoma to be classified as a glioblastoma, we are um, required to obtain a set of molecular markers, including the 1P19Q co-deletion. If that is present, the tumor is not a glioblastoma. It's a different type of tumor, a little bit more rare, called an anaplastic oligodendroglioma. We are supposed to look at the expression of ATRX, a mutation on the ATRX signals for us that this is an astrocytic tumor, like a glioblastoma. And we also look at the expression of IDH1 and IDH2. The presence of mutations on those two genes will let us know that this is what we call a secondary glioblastoma, a glioblastoma that is derived from a less aggressive, lower-grade astrocytoma, and which usually carries an excellent prognosis. In addition to that, we also test for molecular markers that give us ideas about sensitivity to treatment, such as MGMT. Uh, the major molecular markers that are clinically significant in glioblastoma uh, include uh, MGMT methylation, MGMT gene and, and methylation of the promoter of the gene. Uh, also, um, IDH1 uh, um, mutation is important. Um, uh, MGMT uh, methylation status uh, has uh, both prognostic and predictive um, value. Uh, it allows us to sort of classify the patients into two categories, with uh, patients with good prognosis. These are the patients who have the methylation of the MGMT gene and patients um, uh, in, in sort of a worse prognosis category that do not have the methylation of the MGMT gene. Uh, patients who have the methylation uh, also respond better to uh, alkylating therapy. Uh, the, the primary agent that is used in this uh, patient population is temozolomide, which is an alkylating agent, and patients who have the mutation should be receiving the drug uh, as they can actually have a, a, a measurable benefit in terms of survival. Um, so this is the primary um, molecular marker that we're using uh, in clinical setting. Uh, I think that most uh, centers in the United States today are using uh, MGMT um, methylation uh, status analysis to uh, help uh, make uh, decisions uh, about treatment of the patients uh, with glioblastoma. Uh, it's not a very uh, complicated test to, um, to order and, 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 and get done. Uh, turnaround time, uh, kind of depending on where you are, is usually um, a week to 10 days. Uh, many centers um, have developed uh, their in-house assays and they can um, uh, do this um, uh, in, in the facility where the patient is treated. So this is a, a key uh, molecular marker that we are using um, uh, today. We're also using IDH1 mutation and this uh, mutation uh, molecular change uh, can help us distinguish the primary uh, from uh, secondary uh, glioblastomas uh, and they don't really have uh, a sort of predictive value but mostly a prognostic value. So the classification of gliomas has actually just undergone this summer a major um, revision and what that means for GBMs is that these patients that used to be maybe classified as grade two looking under the microscope are now being kicked up to grade three where they would need radiation. They would not just be treated with Temidar. And they don't take into account the MGMT methylation when they're making that characteristic sometimes up to the grade three. And so we've recently had a patient in our own um, medical center who two years ago would have been classified as a grade two based on the histology but since they can no longer use the histology, they've actually pushed it up to, would have pushed that person up to a grade three, 
ignoring the fact that she's MGMT methylated, and we would have given her radiation. Two years ago, because we realized it looked more like a low-grade tumor, it, she was sensitive to Temidar. We just gave her the Temidar, and her tumor is shrinking with the Temidar alone. So I think this is important caveat for people to realize that you know all of us train in the old system, and I think we should understand that these are guidelines and their classifications, but we really should take a look at these tumors very closely, speak to a pathologist and say, look, you know, maybe we can hold, and speak to the radiation doctors at tumor boards and say, look, I know it's classified as grade three of the new classification syndrome, but you know, we, these are sensitive, this, this person's tumor is sensitive to Temidar, we may be able to get away with just Temidar by itself.